The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. And by Mosaic, your Lightroom photos automatically on every device and backed up. And by Shootproof, the easy way to proof and sell your photos online. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe Show. Join hosts Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they chat about the art and business of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 105. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Curran. On last week's episode, we looked at a new Lightroom iOS app to edit your raw images introduced a brand new social network for photographers, and asked the question, is Adobe's Creative Cloud right for you? If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, in iTunes, listen with the popular Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox music apps, or watch in HD on TiVo. Hey Joe, we are back. How are you doing, my friend? Good. We are here. Another week. How's everything over there? Everything is going good, going good, keeping busy as usual, can't complain. Yes. Nope, summer is right around the corner pretty soon, with no more trips to school and yep. all that kind of good stuff, so that'll be nice. I know, the <laughs> kids a, got take like a just break. a little over a month left, and then they're going to be here full time. Yeah. Just, yeah. you know, good and bad, as long as, as, long as daddy can get some work done, that's, that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's right, good and bad, for sure. That's right. So, we have a pretty which could be a very long show. So let's go ahead and I think we should just get into it right away. And uh, basically the show is going to be a little bit different guys this week. Um, normally we go through a lot of different topics and whatnot, but last week was, I wouldn't say a controversial show, but it was like, uh, let's say um, highly commented upon. Um, there was, we got a lot of feedback on last week's show. So we kind of want to address a lot of the questions and comments. So this show is going to be kind of, I wouldn't say a continuation of last week, but more of a fleshing out of last week's show. And it might get a little geeky. We're going to be throwing numbers out there, you know, prices and a lot of other kind of, you know, stuff that gets a little bit more kind of down and dirty, but hopefully you guys can appreciate it and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll get some good info out of it. So yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, normally we, you know, we try and fit a lot of information in, in the course of a show and we can only right. just get so detailed, but because en enough of these comments came in, um, we felt it was important to, you know, kind of flesh it out, like you said. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the first comment came in from Jim Denham and this is in reference to episode 103, where we talked about the top 10 cameras and his comment was about the 60 D. So, uh, you know, I'll just read through it here. He says, uh, great show. Just wanted to share my thoughts on one of the subjects. Being a Canon 60D owner, I was surprised when you both commented that the camera was a bit of a disappointment. I have owned one for two years now and love it and know a couple of other folks who also love theirs. However, thinking about it for a bit, I came up with a theory behind your thoughts and mine. Um, those folks who are looking to upgrade from the 50D were very disappointed in the camera because the 60D was not necessarily an upgrade, at least in part, to the 50D. Uh, there were some improvements, but there were also some steps back. One in particular was the frame rate. So that group of folks were soured by it. However, the reason the 60D is likely to be in the top 10 could be due to the Canon Rebel owners upgrading to it. I upgraded from a Rebel XSI and the performance of the 60D was a significant improvement and I have been delighted with it. The folks I know uh, with it are in the same boat. It's likely that the sales related to uh, the rankings in the top 10 cameras are all in that boat as well. Just some thoughts. Keep up the great work, fellas. Jim. Excellent, Jim. Thank you yes. very much for that. Um, yeah, um, you know, didn't really... You know, kind of want to slam the 60D. It was it really couldn't, kind of didn't. But you know, the the bottom line behind it was, um, you know, okay. So in the studio here, we've been, you know, we've been doing this for very long. Um, we have a 10D, a 20D, a 30D, a 40D, um, and 5D, 7D. You know, on and on. We've been right. canon for quite some time. Right. 
And just like, you know, Jim said, it was quite souring for the folks that came from the 30D, 40D, so on, 50D line and went to a 60D because I think Ken was a little bit, I would say, disingenuous by, you know, the nomenclature, by by putting that 60D title on it. Right. Really, you know, did not do the camera justice, both negative and positive to it, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a certain level of expectation that was thought of with the 60D. I mean, the 50D, the 40D, the 30D, I mean, pro photographers have been using those cameras for years before right. the 5D Mark II came out. Um, you know, in the, in the full frame 5D. So, I mean, those were kind of like what the wedding and event photographers were using. That's what, you know, the portrait photographers were using. It had a higher build quality, let's say. It had that magnesium alloy body. Um, right. It was more durable and it was really meant to be more of that prosumer, pro, you know, entry level pro type of camera. Right. And when the 60D came out, it was uh, the plastic body. Yeah, as soon as you go with the polycarbonate um, body or yep. plastic, yep. Um, it definitely, you know, just takes the entire camera down into a very consumer, um, you know, not not point and shoot, but definitely in between that level. And I think one of the problems that I have with the 60D is it really doesn't fit anywhere. It just right. doesn't fit. I mean, you have Canon's point and shoots. You have then you have their Rebel line. Yep. Then you have that line of EOS, which would be the 10, 20, 30, 40D, 50D. Then, you know, right around that time, we get into the 5D, um, where they went with that whole line of EOS, this, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, and turned it into basically um, a 30D with a full frame, pretty much what it was. Right. Or a 20D with a full frame, which was more of a professional camera and was quite expensive and it remained quite expensive. It was like a, you know, mainstay of wedding photographers for years and years and years. Right. And in that line, you know, in that, in that thought, you had the 7D and the 60, which are, you know, I would call them prosumers. Then finally you got into more of the pro cameras where you got the 1DX and the, you know, I would say the 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III would definitely sure, go into, you know, a pro camera. As yep. soon as you get to, you know, $2,500, $3,500 for yeah. a camera body, I mean, that's a professional camera. I mean, I don't care how you look at yeah, it. Yeah, and I think so, when you hit 6000 or above, I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> I think you know, that's pretty much a pro camera. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and the the the, I, the other side is, is the price, right, Trev? Yeah, well, that's it. So the 60D, um, you know, body only came in at 900 bucks. The right. 50D body only was about a thousand dollars so you know you would think okay well they were able to lower the price a little bit because they went with the plastic body um you know but again you just don't have that same type of build quality um right. and you know and again we're not saying that the 60d is not a good camera no it's a good camera but as what would be considered the next level in that you know 40 50 60d line um, it just didn't compare as far as the same quality of camera. Um, yeah, it, you know, then when you hit the 7D, you know, you're at $1,500. So that's a whole other level, you know. And now when you're down into the Rebel line at the T4i at 800 and the T5i at 750 for the bodies, right. you know, you're kind of a little closer to that 60D. So where really where does it fit in the product line? Yeah, it just, it just felt at the time when it came out, um, they nerfed you know the yep. the line is is really by by naming it what they did um and you know the sad thing is there's many people out there that do not do their due diligence yeah um do not listen to shows like ours and many others that discuss this type of thing and go willy-nilly and go pick up a 60d and think that they're doing themselves um a favor basically sure. going from their 50s and then are extremely disappointed in, you know, the yeah. size of the camera being smaller, a polycarbon, you know, a plastic body in comparison to magnesium, the the other nerfed features, you right. know, like Jim said, this, you know, the frame rates and there's other things. Sure. Um, it's, it, that was a hard one. That was the, that is the one camera that as of late, I would say, you know, Canon just, I don't know, they, they need to either beef it up on the next version or nerf it even more. <laughs> You know, and bring it down get rid of more it. towards the right. Well, see, that's the thing. I mean, the Rebel line is has advanced fairly well. Right. You know, the the uh, T4i, uh, the T5i, um, their specs are really good. And looking at that right. in comparison to the 60D, um, I really don't see, 
you know, yeah. much benefit of going with the 60D over that yeah. Rebel line. I mean, yeah, you're talking you have, about I mean, the price, you know, is, it, is very exactly. comparable. And, and in fact, the uh, T5 specs on paper um, are actually a little better than the 60D, right. but that is but a just look camera. at the, you know, look at the processor. You know, you have either dual Digix 4s or you have a single Digix 5 right. um, on the T4. So, I mean, yeah. Anyways, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but we really appreciate the comment, Jim. It's, uh, you know, it's definitely one of these things that, you know, we definitely don't want to, you know, uh, let, let's say uh, uh, dump on a specific camera, but, you know, kind of right. we have to call it when we, you know, when we see it, as we see it. And that, you know, being a, sh you know, Canon shooter for, me you know, countless years, seeing that, it kind of just didn't sit well with me, especially. Um, I mean, obviously, we wouldn't have purchased one being the studio, but still just seeing that, you know, at that time, I was receiving a lot of tweets from people saying, you know, oh, should I get this camera? I just bought this camera and what the right. heck happened? And, right. you know, it was a lot of negativity that went around it. It was associated with it when it first came out that I was responding to basically through Twitter. Right. And uh, so I kind of wanted to comment on it. Sure. Yep. But I tell you what, we got a lot more to come. But before we get there, let's go ahead and hear from a couple of our sponsors. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. From phones, tablets, laptops, and PCs, these days photographers use multiple internet-connected devices. Have you ever wished you could view your Lightroom images, folders, collections, and metadata from any of these devices? Now you can. Mosaic Storage Systems has created Mosaic View, an application that gives you access to your images without exporting or using a publishing service. Mosaic also offers Mosaic Archive, which directly integrates with Lightroom as a powerful cloud backup solution. Mosaic gives photographers access to all of their images from anywhere on virtually any device. Try Mosaic View today for free and access 2,000 of your most recent images. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Mosaic is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans. Go to mosaicarchive.com and use coupon code DPCAFE at checkout. Mosaic. Lightroom. Anywhere. Any device. Secure. Backed up. As photographers, we're always trying to increase sales and profits after every event. We shoot an event and have hundreds or even thousands of images that just sit on our hard drives. Perhaps a better workflow would increase sales by getting those valuable images in front of the client. That's where ShootProof comes in. At ShootProof.com, you can have an online gallery for all of your clients' proofing needs. ShootProof helps increase profits while building your brand and securing your photos without charging commission fees on sales. ShootProof galleries display your photos beautifully while helping to streamline your workflow and automate more of your business through their intuitive studio control panel. Once approved, photos can be directly fulfilled through ShootProof's various professional lab partners or fulfilled by you. All ShootProof plans have the same feature set. You simply choose the number of client photos stored, decide what products to sell, and the price. Try ShootProof today by taking advantage of their free 30-day trial offer. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, ShootProof is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans by using promo code DPC20 at checkout. ShootProof. Upload. Share. Sell. Print. So, all right, guys, we are back. So, um, you know, we got a lot, a lot of comments on last week's show in regards to Adobe's um, Creative Cloud. Yes. It's a huge, you know, it, it's it's out there. It's big. It is the monstrosity of an elephant in the room, let's say, in the in the uh, in the China uh, room. But anyways, you know, looking, you know, looking at so many of these comments, they all have a similar 
um, let's say, you know, sound to them. And one of them that came through was really in, you know, they did a really good job at kind of formulating the whole thing. And it is kind of lengthy, but we would, you know, we kind of thought about it. And we're like, you know, we're not going to, we won't be able to do this person justice if we don't read the entire right. um, comment. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll kind of jump back into this topic because it is a huge one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this uh, comment came in from Terry Bobby. He's uh a regular listener of the show. We've interacted with him a bunch of times on Facebook. So thanks right. again, for Terry, for your comment. We always appreciate connecting with you. Um, so he says, always enjoy your take on the news around photography. From my digging, Lightroom is going to go to the Creative Cloud and also be available as a licensed version. If everyone is satisfied to stay with the old model, not drinking the Adobe Kool-Aid, <laughs> and destined to drive a clunker, Adobe <laughs> will lose out. Adobe has continued to add features to their programs. At $240 a year, it is a bit more than an upgrade, but not much. And if you're using the premium or design suites, much less at $600 per year. They continue to make changes to their suite of products for all creatives. The new Creative Shake filter that is only available in the cloud is something they presented as a concept last year at Max and is now available. I am not one to jump on the newest cool gadget. However, when it comes to a tool that will save me time and to, in turn, help me create better art, I'm in favor. As for other programs, a big part of my workflow is using Luminosity Mass with elaborate actions that cannot be easily recreated. I will also go for the $10 subscription to the cloud for one year and upgrade Lightroom when it becomes available. Many of the enhancements in Lightroom make Lightroom 5 an even more powerful first workflow step. Microsoft has gone the subscription route as well with Office 365 at $99 for up to five installs. CAD software has done this also. Many complain about the $20 or $30 per month subscription cost. It is still much less than a phone or a cable bill. The other thing that I have not been hearing about is that this mo um, how this model is going to limit the pirating of the programs. I wonder how many people will now subscribe to the Creative Cloud. Wow, that is a wonderful comment. And yeah, um, a lot really of thought good, out. Very thought out. We mm -hmm. really appreciate that. I mean, our listeners are you know, and viewers are unbelievable. We thank you guys because we, we're getting, you know, comments like this on a regular basis, you know, just they are, let's say upper end, um, either, you know, basic photographers all the way up to pros and, you know, very articulate. So, yeah, you know, definitely to respond to this, we're going to have to get a little geeky. Yeah. We're going to have to get, you know, we're going to have to do some numbers. Um, Trevor did some wonderful number crunching, Ugh, um, on the back end of this. At the end of that, man. <laughs> Bec you know, and the reason it was hurting is because it's not very, let's say, straightforward. There is a yeah. lot to really think about when deciding, you know, is this creative cloud um, good? You know, is it a good value? Is it is it a good fit for right. you or for your business? So we kind of got a lot. There's a lot of numbers for you guys. So hang yeah. in there and uh, we're going to give you some some good data that will probably kind of clue you into certain areas of this that probably you didn't think about and uh, possibly even Terry didn't think about at the time. Right. Sure. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, I feel that this is really an important subject. You know, we can talk about cameras. We can talk about different bodies and what have you. There's so many different options out there to choose from. Fact of the matter is pretty much every photographer at some point is going to end up utilizing Photoshop. Um, many photographers are involved with design. They're involved with photo uh, video editing. So most likely you're already using Adobe products. Even right. if you're a beginner, you may be using Photoshop elements or something like that. Um, so this yeah, one way or another, you're bringing in data, you're bringing in ones and zeros and you have to manipulate them, either manipulate them to make them better or manipulate them to tag them and make them easier to find or manipulate them to just categorize them, catalog them and whatnot. Uh, but one way or another, those photographs, audio tracks and video um, pieces do need to get manipulated some way, somehow. And Adobe basically has, let's say a monopoly on that manipulation they really do for yeah. many years right yeah absolutely so so kind of to start um i did confirm on adobe's website that lightroom 5 will be available both ways 
Um, it will be available as part of the subscription with Creative Cloud. It'll also be available as a standalone. Um, moving forward, the feeling is that it will stay that way because there are a lot of beginner photographers, let's say, or advanced, but not professionals necessarily, that use right. Lightroom for managing their, their imagery, but who are not necessarily big into the rest of the creative suite. So they, yeah, they're not going to need, right, they're not they going to need, need audition and premiere, you know, when they're just trying to catalog images. Right, right, exactly. So, so that's good news. Um, right now you can upgrade if you're already a Lightroom uh, three owner, you can upgrade to Lightroom four for like 80 bucks. Okay. Um, so, you know, that that's really not a bad thing to do that can keep at least keep your workflow going as is on your local computer without having to commit to the cloud subscription if you don't want to. Right. Um, so and that would be a recommendation by me for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. long as they're, as long as they're giving you that and, and offering that up um, an actual physical upgrade where you own it, you buy it, it's yours. Yep. Um, do it. Um, do it quickly. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so as a first time buyer in creative cloud, you have access to all their software products, which is awesome. Um, that's for like $50 per month with an annual commitment. Um, if you don't commit to it annually, it's more expensive. So that that's kind yeah. of a caveat. So that yeah. equals to uh, $600 a year. Um, if you were to buy the master collection of software, which is all their apps, um, that would cost you $2,599. So you actually, with this Creative Cloud subscription, have access to the complete master collection, right. um, which is great. I mean, if you need all of that software, that's that's fantastic. And, you know, I mean, it's got its pros and cons, of course, that we'll talk about. But but uh, it's a great way to get in, to have access to all the software for a smaller monthly amount rather than having to lay out $2,600 all in one exactly. pot. Exactly. Right. So, uh so yeah, so you know, so the 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 side note to that is um, the idea of do you need it, right? And you know, just because you can have it doesn't mean that you need it nor want it, right? Um, or we even want it on your machine. Um, it's a, lot, many it's a time, lot of software. Those are some big files. Yeah, you know, I mean, many times we'll we in the studio we'll have certain machines for certain things. Right. We'll have one that only does Lightroom. We'll have one that you know and has all the Lightroom catalogs in it. Um, you know, because we don't want to corrupt it with anything else. We want to keep it nice and virgin and just doing one thing. Because right. That seems to work the best. And then we'll have other machines that will have the entire master collection that has everything on it. The thing is, is you're talking about gigs and gigs and gigs and gigs. Um, to put that master collection in there. Right. Um, so, you know, once again, do you need it? And how many of the packages do you need? Well, that's um, it. I mean, if you went with, let's say, CS6 design standard, which right. which for me works, um, you know, and that includes Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Acrobat 10 Pro, Bridge, and Media Encoder. I don't know many people that use Bridge. Um, some do. Um, yeah. It's... You know, it's not what I would call pro level, but it can help catalog and organize your photos. Yeah. Um, so if you were to buy that uh, design standard collection for the first time, it would be like $1,300 right. um, to get all these same apps, plus all of the other ones that are in creative cloud, it's still going to cost you $600 a year. Exactly. So if you really don't need all of those other apps and you really only need what's in design standard you're gonna, in the long run, end up paying more money um, through Creative Cloud. Right. Uh, you know, because traditionally, um, Adobe updates their software, they do a full version update about every two years, and they do that right. 0.5 update every year. Exactly, like the version CS5, then CS5.5, and then CS6, and then CS6.5, and so on and so forth. Every year, it's usually that point, and then two years, right. you'll get that full that full upgrade. And for the most of us, um, even if we're quote unquote staying current, uh, most of us will upgrade on every full revision. So yeah, maybe so there every two years. Yeah, yeah, every two years. Well, and that's the case. So now if you look at it, if you stay with Creative Cloud for two years during that two year cycle, which seems to be the normal upgrade process, you're gonna spend $1,200 um, for the Creative Cloud for those two years. If you had just purchased, let's say, Design Standard, 
that would have cost you $1,300. Right, $100 more. $100 more, right. So, um, but, you know, after you have purchased the full version of Design Standard, the average to upgrade is about 550 bucks. So now you look at it and you say, okay, now we're in CS6. I just wrote, wrote it out for two years. It's time to go to CS7. You know, now I would buy the upgrade for $550. Okay, now I can ride that for another two years until CS8 comes out. Right. All right. If you're on Creative Cloud, you're going to be paying that $600 a year. So you're going to be paying an additional $1,200 over that course of two years as opposed to just the $550 upgrade. Right. Um, exactly. So as time goes by, the cloud, it, it exponenti exponentiates. Yes. You, you will slowly and continuously pay more slowly. Yep. Obviously. And it'll build up that amount over time for sure. Yeah, that's right. I mean, let's assume that we're all going to be in business, right? For, for many yep. years to come, that will really add up. If every year you could get the up or every two years, you could get your upgrade package for $500, $550, $600 even, but you're continually paying $600 every year ongoing. And what's to say Adobe's not going to raise their prices for the cloud um, in years to come as well. Exactly. Um, yes, you will definitely be paying more money than if you uh, just purchased it. And bear in mind, the numbers that we're giving you guys are based upon giving them full one year lump sums. These, these prices are not if you go and do a monthly cycle with them. Right. Because if you do, it's going to be, let's say, $20 more. So instead of, let's say, being 50 bucks, it's 70 or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, these numbers will definitely be much, much greater if you pay monthly and not for a full year. And not have that annual commitment. That's right. Yeah, exactly. that's right. So, all right, now let's look at it. That Those numbers were basically for first-time buyers. So let's say you already own a Creative Suite version, CS3 or newer. Right. Okay. Um, then you qualify for the upgrade price subscription. So that upgrade price is $29.99 a month with that annual contract. Right. For one year. For one year. So that's about $360 that you'll pay out for that year. And this gives you access to all of Adobe's Creative Cloud software. So now you think, okay, well, it's not $50 a month, it's $30 a month. And now, you know, now I do have access for all the software. So um, that's great. Uh, but again, if you only needed design standard um, and you don't need all those applications, um, you know, you're going to be spending a lot more money because your your design standard upgrade, again, is five hundred fifty dollars. But you're going to be spending twelve hundred, um, uh, excuse me, uh, seven hundred and twenty dollars. Seven hundred twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Over the course of those two years. So you are going to end up spending one hundred and seventy dollars more for Creative Cloud, is that really that big of a deal? I mean, you look at it and it's probably not over the course of two years because you say, well, you know, I can stay up to date with the software. I can make sure that I have the most recent versions and you'll be, always be compatible with everybody else who has a subscription. Exactly. So maybe that's a small price to pay. Right, right. And then of course we have to look at the single app purchase, right? Right. Right. So if so, now let's look at it just from a photographer standpoint, not design, not video. And we're going to look at Photoshop and Lightroom. OK, so if you don't have the previous versions, um, you can get them for uh, 1999 a piece per month. So it'd That's be like for $40 dollars per month and that would be four hundred eighty dollars a year on Creative Cloud. So that gives you access to the full Photoshop. Um, version in the full Lightroom version, okay? Um, if you purchased Photoshop CS6 for the first time, you're looking at 700 bucks. That's an expensive right. program um, by itself. Mm -hmm. And Lightroom 4 right now is selling for 149. So that would be a total of $848 that you would put out to buy both of those pieces of software for the first time today. Exactly. Um, so you would end up paying uh, $112 more for Creative Cloud over those two years than if you bought them. So, and that's once again, if you pay twice, if you pay for one year straight through and you weren't doing monthly, right. you're still paying 112 over. 
Um, if you were to pay monthly, you that number would probably be three to four hundred dollars more. Right. Um, so bear that in mind because that's very, very important. Remember the numbers. I'm going to keep on reiterating. The numbers are based on you paying full amount for one year straight. Right. Right. And and being locked in, not having the no. flexibility to get out of there whenever you want. No. Exactly. Exactly. So then, then of course, we can look at the Photoshop and Lightroom, right? Um, that's, you know, that that is basically what photographers are looking for. Now, we are all, you know, we're becoming more and more media oriented, multimedia oriented. So, you know, some of us will, you know, delve into Premiere to make a video for a right. client or, you know, maybe need audition to um, work on some audio that they capture during a wedding or during whatever, um, you know, and maybe they'll play with, you know, in design or maybe, you know, uh, something else. But the thing is, is, you know, having that is great, but do you need it? How much do you want and how much are you willing to pay for how long? And the, the question still, you know, sits here and, and, it, and it remains that do you wish to pay more for the product than just simply buying it? Uh, by basically leasing it from Adobe, right? Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. I mean, in the long run, even though the numbers may not be significant on a per year basis, let's say, or even a, a two year basis, but it will definitely add up over time and you will be paying more. Um, so, you know, now we'll go back to the single products for a minute. Um, if you already own Photoshop and Lightroom, then you can buy subscriptions to the individual apps for $9.99 each. So that'd be $20 per month or $240 a year or $480 for two years. Right. So if you were to go and purchase the upgrade for Photoshop today, um, just the standard version of Photoshop, not Photoshop extended, right. um, that's 200 bucks. And Lightroom uh, for upgrade is $80. So you'd be looking right. at $280. Um, that is still cheaper. You know, yeah. you would be it's paying over, it's over two dollars more for right. Creative Cloud over exactly. the course of those two years. Yeah. And once again, yeah. So and that's the two hundred dollars for the year base. So you're looking at, you know, close to four hundred plus. You'd be paying more, you know, going with the creative, you know, creative cloud. There's advantages, of course, like for you that, you know, use right. all of these, you know, apps. Obviously for you, you're you need to re remain um, current with all of the, you know, in-house stuff, as well as anyone that's bringing stuff to you and you're shipping it out to them um, with your design work, you know? That's right, um, compatibility really is important for me. That's it's huge. Right. So for you guys, it would probably be, make sense paying more to be, you know, on the Creative Cloud right. um, um, uh, uh, system in comparison to making those purchases, because for you, you'll be constantly upgraded, up to date, and you won't have to think about it, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You don't have to think about it. You're always going to have the most recent. If you need to send files to a vendor, um, you know, if they're not on Creative Cloud, well, then they can get on Creative Cloud and make sure right. that everybody's running the same software. So, you know, I mean, it's got its pros and cons. It really does. Um, you know, if you're a small shop, this may not be the answer for you. If you're not concerned about compatibility, if if the work you do is kind of in your own bubble you know your own encapsulated studio there and your final output is going to be jpeg files let's say to send to a uh, a printer um you know you don't really have to worry about um being up to date with the software and that does give you the ability to ride out these older versions of the software for a longer period of time if you don't need any of the new tools or features that the new versions of the software have yeah, you know, I think one of the biggest things that you guys need to think about when it comes to this creative cloud is the machines that you're currently using. Will they be the machine that you use in a year from now, two years from now, five years from now? Um, that is a very, very important question when it comes to the cloud, right? And I know from speaking with you about this and your past uh, boss, I think it was, yeah. the place where you used to work, you know, some of these machines, they get older yeah. and, uh, and now all of a sudden you have major problems um, and this could be extremely problematic, right? Yeah, well, that's exactly right. So, um, so you know, my old boss, um, he contacted me a few months ago 
um, was asking me about computers and everything. And he's like, well, you know, um, I finally need to upgrade my creative suite. You know, I'm starting to get files in from outside vendors and stuff like that. And, and I'm just, I can't open them. I can't work right. with them. They're, they're in newer versions. So he was running CS3. Um, we had CS3 when, you know, when I was still working with him. Um, it's, I would say he's probably had CS3 for six plus years. Right. Um, now, for the most part, that really hasn't been a problem. You know, because up until just recently, we you know, when he called a few months ago, he was still using CS3, which means all of the vendors and people that he was working with were still able to take those files and the files that were being sent to him, he was still able to use. Right. Backwards compatibility uh, yep. remains until just, you know, as of late, right? Right, right, exactly. But we had upgraded from CS2 to CS3. And I'm thinking back, that upgrade at the time, I think, cost $450. So for $450 investment, he's been using that same suite for the past six plus years. Right. I mean, he got his money's worth, you know, he definitely yeah, got he his squeezed it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, now, uh, now that he needs to upgrade, he's looking at going with the creative cloud and he will need to get, you know, he needs Photoshop. He needs Illustrator, InDesign, Acrobat Pro. So the right. single licenses aren't going to work for him. He's got to go with the full boat. But he can get the upgrade price, which is good because he's a previous owner. So he can get that for $360 a year. Right. Um, but if he looks at that same six-year course, okay, um, he'll end up paying $2,160 for Creative Cloud over those six years. Right. And if he had just if he just purchased the CS6 upgrade right now, um, it cost him 550 bucks. Right. And so you're looking at, you know, over, you know, $1,600 difference right. uh, more that he'd be spending um, going this route when he really doesn't need to go this route. The problem that I'm having with the entire thing, Trevor, mm -hmm. is that um, we will be forced to go down this path. Yeah. We, we will not have a quote unquote buyout option. Nope. We are basically being forced to lease the car and at the end of the lease have have nothing. That's right. Um, we're being forced if we decide to go monthly, you know, what happens if, you know, your card came up declined or, you know, you yeah. forgot to pay it or something. And now all of a sudden your Photoshop or something no longer works because it's phoning home all the time to authenticate. Right. Um, not owning something and leasing it. it it's, you know, it, it's a, it can be extremely problematic. Well, Not that's it. You know, more leasing costly. a car works for some people and buying a car works for other people. The issue right. that I have here is that Adobe is not giving us the option to buy, right. you know, the creative suite. Lightroom, yes, but not the creative suite. They're taking that away. That was announced and that's what really has, has spawned all of this conversation and exactly. this debate because, you know, this really can affect our businesses in a big way. You know, if you have multiple computers, you need to get multiple licenses. You need to have multiple installs of the software. So now your dollars per month are multiplying. Exactly. Um, you know, they do have team, um, special team pricing. So, you know, I mean, I don't even want to get into that. Right yeah, they, it, that, that goes into a whole nother numbering <laughs> That's a whole system. Other thing. I don't even, but, I don't even yeah. want to do the math. You know what? They, if you have they a team do it. and you need more software, <laughs> go on Adobe's yeah, website yeah. and start doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It basically goes into, broke. yeah, that's, it's done. It basically goes by a, a seat license you're buying yeah. per seat, yep. um, is how they do it. And, um, you, it will get to be a stupid price really quick. We, we won't even go into that. Um, anyways, but you know, one of the other things that kind of crossed my mind is you, you know, you were talking when we were, we were having this conversation, you were telling me about a machine that you have there that's older. Um, it's a Mac. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's to a point where you really don't want to upgrade the operating system, right? Um, because it'll probably slow down the machine because the machine's really not made to go to this newer operating system. But yep. the Creative Suite may require the newer operating system to run. Now, that is very, that, that, that question there is very big. Because if you are, let's say, in this lease cycle, or maybe you purchased, let's say, um, right. the entire package for a year, or maybe you paid it out for two years. Who knows what you did, right? Right. And now all of a sudden, a new, let's say the new OS comes out, uh, OS uh, 10.9 
for Mac, let's say, and it is required to have that for the new update to the software. You're sitting there with an older version. You yep. would say, oh, we'll just go ahead and update to 10.9. Right. But maybe the machine that you're currently using cannot be can't, upgraded can't to 10.9. Now what? Well, that, you know, that's you exactly right. Money. I mean, I'm running a 2006 Mac Pro as one of my uh, primary workstations. Right. Um, I'm running CS5. And for the web development and print work that I do, um, that's perfect. I mean, Perfect. I'm running CS5. I'm still very compatible with all of my outside vendors, so that's not a problem. This, The configuration, I'm running Snow Leopard. Um, this configuration works very well. The machine is fast. I've got like, you know, 12 gigs of RAM or some crazy thing in it. I've got an internal right. RAID, so it's fast as anything. Um, right. I mean, it's a it's a fantastic machine, but the, mo the, the only operating system newer that I can put on here right now is Lion. Um, I cannot put Mountain Lion and I will not be able to put anything newer on this machine. Um, fortunately for me right this minute, CS6 is compatible with Snow Leopard. So I don't, I wouldn't necessarily have to upgrade to Lion. But moving forward, I guarantee you the next iteration of Adobe um, Creative Suite is not going to be compatible with Snow Leopard. It's already two OS's back now. They're exactly. not going to continue that backwards uh, compatibility, which basically means if they make it compatible back to Lion, I could potentially upgrade to Lion, upgrade the software, but I guarantee you that machine is going to run like a dog. Yeah, It's, it's going to be so it's slow. Run. It's just not exactly. going to have the processing power. So, I mean, and so this is, so this is the, this is the, the, the crux of it. You know, you're basically, like I said, leasing a car with no option to buy. Right. I hate that. Yeah. If you know, some people can lease, some people use it as a write off and they can say, yes, I, we want to do that. That's great. But other people would like to buy. Yep. I would, I would venture to say the majority of us out there would like to buy something, own it and pay once and never pay again and just use it until you see fit to not use it any longer, not That's be right. forced to continuously upgrade to the next best thing. It's it's not necessary for doing the stuff that we do. That's period. Right. Yeah. Now, bear in mind also, Adobe produces Camera Raw. Um, you know, the fear would be, you know, some photographers they've written in, they're like, okay, well, what happens, you know, when a new camera comes out and it's not supported, and now we can't read the, you know, the camera, the the raw images into Photoshop. Well, that's never going to happen. No. And the reason that's not going to happen is because Adobe will always put out Camera Raw free of charge because cameras are continuously being created right if they ever created camera raw whereas the only way to get it is through this leasing system as i call it yeah right yep adobe would go down a road they they would they would end up they, they would do. wake up a very very large monster no and then people now are also writing in and saying to me now you know, we were converting to DNGs, you know, is that okay? You know, uh, uh, what, what's going to happen if I don't go down this road with them? And you know, will, will I be able to read my DNGs? Your DNGs are safe. You will yeah. be able to read your DNGs. Like I said, just like with raw, if they went ahead and made the DNG converter into something that you had to lease, um, it would be, it'd be hellfire. It just, they wouldn't be able to do it. Right. The negative publicity would be so great, but I really would like to ask the question to Adobe. So if anyone out there is from Adobe listening, I would like to ask the question, what happens if you have a machine that will not run the next iteration of the package that you're attempting to download onto the machine via right. the cloud, right? right? Yep. If it doesn't, can we hold still, hold steady, not progress forward and use the package as it sits in a, set, in a state, um, in a stagnant state, and use it indefinitely if we continue to pay you um, for your lease, for your service? Or will it be mandated that we continue to upgrade along with how the package continues to upgrade? Right. And at that point, no longer be able to use the software until we upgrade our hardware. Right. So that is a major, that is one of probably the biggest questions 
um, because that could really be a major deciding factor if people go ahead and use Lightroom because it is standalone and it will remain standalone and can be purchased and use other software as we talked about in previous shows like the GIMP and Acorn and other image editing software, basic as they are, but sure. to, to you know, let's say um, circumvent this type of problem from happening. So, yeah, I would I would love to ask that question. I would love to have that answered because I know the viewers and listeners would love to hear that. Um, it is a very hot topic. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of like blowing up. And the problem is, is it, there's not a lot of real solid end information. I think the information that we just gave everyone is about as solid as I've heard right across the board on any show, on any website, anywhere. Right. So hopefully you guys, you know, appreciate that and you can use that going forward. But yeah, to yeah, help you this, make your decisions. I mean, yeah. this is a major decision making task that needs to be done and most likely will need to be done fairly quickly. Right. Um, it, it, it is a big issue. And I, I think you're right. Um, push comes to shove. We, we've said before that most of the features that we need as photographers in Photoshop, you really don't need a, a program much newer than Photoshop 7. With right. that said, if you buy Lightroom, if you want to stay with the light, right, um, you know, Lightroom camp as opposed to going over to Aperture, um, you know, you can get these the you know the open source GIMP program, which is really pretty good. Um, yep. You can get the Acorn uh, software and use those as Photoshop replacements if you don't want to commit to the subscription. If your hardware, you know, you don't want to upgrade your hardware just to you know, commit to this subscription um, because you're not going to be able to buy it, you know, yeah. and that's that's really what it comes exactly. down to. Now, so, who you know, knows? This we could should, all change, too. We should put out the question, you know, if you guys want to see any of, uh, you know, any coverage on some of the free possibilities yeah. um, out there, um, let us know. You know, we've, you know, you just put out a couple, Acorn and Gimp. Um, if you guys want to see or hear anything more about those, let us know. Put them into the comments. Um, yeah, are they even something that you would consider? Absolutely. To. Because they, they all have their positives and their negatives. Obviously, you know, the monopoly goes to, you know, Adobe. I mean, I've been in the now just to kind of, you know, enclosure. I've been an Adobe user back when Photoshop wasn't Photoshop. And I even forgot what it was when they bought it from yeah. the other company. So from the very beginning, um, I've used Photoshop for many, many, many years. So Yes, I, I still love Adobe. I love their product, but I have to, you know, question basically for myself and for you guys, um, you know, what they're doing will really benefit us out here or will just simply benefit their bottom line by forcing this leasing of their product where they may not see this continuous buying of their product. Now, the problem that I have with that also is another piece of it. And the idea of them um, going through, going to this model could possibly stagnate or stifle sure. innovation and ar allow them to possibly only iterate and not innovate. And right. the reason being is is you're kind of stuck at that point in this in this model. And instead of them really having to create new and wonderful things that will allow us out here to look at it and say, "I need that new version." Right. I need to update, you know, when for, you know, when this, when they, create, well, how much, how much new things have you seen, you know, since seven, since layers, there's not a lot of new things. So, but there's been a couple of things that they kind of honed in on that made us say, you know what, we need that. Now, once that is gone, what, you know, what will make them create these new innovations? Yeah. Where's your incentive? Get our, yeah. Where's your incentive to get our dollars when they're going to get them? anyways and being a monopoly that is very hard for me to see you know yeah. apple has you know incentive to continuously not iterate but you know create new innovation be based on android you know if you like sure. it or not they they thank god for them because you look at the microsoft product and it's just like a not even you know a hair compared to the wool on you know on apple there's nothing there right, so right. but android is doing really well and it's make it's forcing apple to constantly create good stuff now there is no one like that on the adobe side there is no one out there so 
you know, I could see that being a problem. So we'll see what I guess ends up happening. We definitely want to hear from you. <laughs> you know, probably this show we're going to get a lot of feedback on this one too. Yeah. But we promise next show we won't we won't uh, we won't dwell on this. Yeah, anymore. we won't beat the horse anymore. <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> in the um, submission. Uh, if we if we do hear from Adobe or if we do hear from someone in the Adobe's camp that gives us some more finite information on based on what they're going to be doing or, um, you know, if we've said something that is uh, not correct, um, please call us out on it. We, we you know, we want to yeah. make sure that the information that goes to you guys is 100 um, percent not only accurate, but is will benefit you, the photographer. That's and, right. Of course, benefit us. That's why we're here. You know. So. That's right. That's why we're doing it. I mean, we're not bashing Adobe by any means. We're just questioning what they're doing. Um, you know, how it will affect all of us. Is it really right. for the better or not? And right. and that will time will see. You know. And the fact of the matter is, Adobe at any point in time could say, "All right, you know what? We're going to make the software available for purchase again." You know, they'll they'll tweak some code and. Now, all of a sudden, we can buy it and install it on our computers and we'll be all happy, happy again. Exactly. Um, and their cloud will probably continue to exist and offer certain benefits or advantages over the the purchased you know, software, the standalone software that may incentivize people to move that direction. But, you right. know, only time will tell. This is something they want to test. They're throwing it out there. They're hoping that people will, re will respond well to it. And really, you know, it's what works for your business model. So, yeah, you know, and one one thing just to conclude, um, you know, one of the one of the um, points uh, that were made um, was, you know, regarding piracy and how, you know, this could possibly really, you know, kind of slow down the pirating of Adobe product. And I kind of, you know, as, you know, a, you know, a past software um, a company owner. Um, right. many years ago, I can tell you for sure. Um, I would say 90, 90% certain that this would do absolutely nothing to help them in regards to software piracy because yeah. the pirates are still going to get a copy of the unit. They're still going to go ahead and hack the unit. And if for some reason this, this copy calls home to authenticate, they would basically shut down all out, you know, outbound traffic, um, from the program. Um, force feed the program with a specific code that it was supposed to have gotten from the internet, which the internet is currently not working on the package. Right. And it will just simply work. And then period. it'll work. And yeah, I don't that's think it. it will stop the pirates. I Absolutely mean, where, not. Where there's a will, there's a way. It's just like people who pirate for, you know, create viruses and Absolutely. malware and everything for Windows machines. It's yeah. the dominant OS in the, in the, computer market so they're yeah, this model this model is for adobe's back pocket it's not for pirating no There's, that no. that'll be a side note yeah. so anyways we want to hear from you guys let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get out of here oh my god i think we're running long again yeah yeah and we were hoping this would be a little bit shorter but uh, not yeah, just didn't it didn't <laughs> <laughs> all right so joe if people want to connect with you outside of the show what's the best way to reach you uh, you can find me over on Twitter, of course. That's at Joseph Christina, and that's Christina without an H. Great, and you can connect with me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Current. So, all right, we are out of here, Trevor. So, guys, you can find all of this week's show notes for this episode by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash 105. And don't forget, if you enjoy the show, please give us a five-star review in iTunes. Help spread the word through Twitter. And now you can give us a call through our new comment line by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash love. So keep your questions and comments coming and we will see you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Be sure to subscribe to the show for free in iTunes or through RSS. You can also listen on Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and watch in HD on TiVo. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.